For years, when someone was traveling in Japan, they probably had a Japan Rail Pass because the Japan Rail Pass was synonymous with value. We all want to save a buck, and while I'm sure most people didn't actually calculate if the Japan Rail Pass was the best deal for their trip, it was still advertised as the best value if you were going to use the Shinkansen or the Japanese bullet train. But starting October 1st of 2023, the Japan Rail Pass is said to increase by 70% in price. And honestly, that's a pretty big F you to tourists, especially because it doesn't seem like you're really getting any extra benefits added on. Yes, you will be able to access the Nozomi and Mizuho lines if you pay an extra fee, and those are the fastest bullet trains in Japan. But if you've never heard of them before, then you probably weren't missing out on much in the first place. I guess you'll be getting some extra discounts for certain shops or brands, but that doesn't really justify the 70% increase in the first place place. They better be damn good deals in order to justify this pricing, like half off all ryokans or something like that. Which, by the way, is something that would never happen in this universe. I mean, your boy be just trying to soak in some onsens if you know what I'm saying. But let's actually go in and calculate to see if you're saving money based on your itinerary. And don't worry, I did the math for you right here so you don't even need to pull out a calculator. You can thank me later. We're gonna focus on the seven day pass right now, which is the highest increase. The 14 and the 21 day also have an increase too. I think the seven day pass is usually the most popular, but the 14 and 21 day passes really are an investment because they were more expensive in the first place. So if you want more of a breakdown for those, make sure to leave it in the comments and maybe I'll make a separate video about it. But getting into actual money now, the regular seven day pass is increasing from 29,650 yen to 50,000 yen. And so basically in USD, it's around 200 USD to 345 USD. And that's at the time of making this video, the yen is fluctuating a lot as well. So things can definitely change. Now, most people end up planning their Japan trip to encompass the big three, which are Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. And obviously because you would be using the bullet train to get to these locations, you would be using the rail pass. So if we calculate the monetary value of this trip. I'm just going by USD because it's a little easier for everyone. From Tokyo to Kyoto is going to be $98. Kyoto to Osaka is actually a pretty short distance, so it's only going to be $10. And Osaka back to Tokyo is going to be around $100. Now, the JR Pass usually covers regular train fare as well, but be warned, it's only for JR trains. You're gonna be taking the subway, you're gonna be taking buses, you're gonna be taking a lot of other public transportation as well. So it's not going to cover everything, just JR branded trains. For that, I calculated about $25 for that train fare. So that's gonna be around $233 total. Now for the initial price of the Japan Rail Pass before the 70% increase, this is actually justifiable. But for the new pricing, we're going to have to add more destinations in order to create more value. And I'll be honest, I don't know what your travel style is like, but Kyoto and Osaka in the span of seven days seems like a lot to me. That's only around two and a half days per location before you have to go back to Tokyo. And adding more cities doesn't really sound feasible within a seven day span, but we're gonna do it just to try and create that value. So we already have Tokyo to Kyoto, that's gonna be $98. Kyoto to Osaka, that's gonna be $10. I added Hiroshima, so Osaka to Hiroshima, $76. I also recommend that as a place to visit. I feel like checking out the Atomic Bomb Museum is a must and then there also is a day trip to an island called Miyajima, which I highly recommend. And then we have Hiroshima to Tokyo, which is $130. We're going to add that $25 as the JR train expense. So that's $339 total. Now this doesn't even make it to the $345 price point of the Japan Rail Pass with that 70% increase. Plus, it doesn't even allow you one full day in each location. So maybe if you're just planning to buy a snack, glance at a temple for maybe 10 seconds, and then head on to your next location, this might be a feasible schedule, but this would not cut it for my travel book. Add on the fact that you can't buy the Rail Pass in train stations anymore, you must purchase it ahead of time and have it delivered to your address. I feel like it's just not worth it. It's ultimately saying, tourists, don't buy this anymore. We don't want you to use it. The only way I can imagine making the JR Pass feasible 
is spending the extra money in order to buy the 21 day pass. That's going to be almost a $700 price point, but if you're going to be traveling between Osaka, Tokyo, and maybe Hokkaido at least seven times, then you might be able to make it worth it. And I don't know, if you're doing that, then you're probably going to be flagged for suspicious activity because what the hell are you doing at that point? Now, just a little bit of background before we finish up the reason for this price increase. Now, of course, there is a decline in the value of the yen, and there's also inflation in electricity costs as well as train maintenance. And so that's one of the biggest factors in this increase. And you may think that factors are also going to affect just the regular ticket sales in general. Usually you're able to purchase a one-way ticket anyways, even if you don't have the JR Pass. But I think you're gonna get a better bargain just buying each ticket individually. Because even though there is a high possibility that the price of each ticket will also increase. It is still catered to a Japanese audience, someone who has a Japanese salary. So they can't make it so expensive that Japanese people won't be able to use it anymore. This and the fact that you just get more flexibility for travel instead of having to plan everything within a 7, 14, or 21 day period, that is invaluable, at least to me. I would say the perks of the Shinkansen are mainly saving time, and the convenience of it. But there are so many other ways to travel within Tokyo. And a lot of them are cheaper too. You can check out my video where I took the Willer bus from Tokyo to Osaka and Hiroshima. And make sure to subscribe because I'll also be going over alternative ways to travel within Japan. And you're not going to want to miss that. So happy travels and see you next time. Peace.